Hey there everyone and how are you guys doing today? I am Joe Mari and welcome to another video from MCOJ. Now in this video here today I'm going to be giving you my full review of the Verizon Ellipsis 7 Android tablet. So guys the Ellipsis 7 Android tablet is a 7 inch budget mid-range tablet available exclusively through Verizon Wireless. This has Verizon's 4G LTE data connectivity available on it and we're going to be taking a look at the design, the hardware, the software and find out if this is a tablet worth your money. All that more coming up in this episode of Mobile Cup of Joe, but guys, before we go any further, please go ahead and grab that coffee cup, fill it up, bring it over and sit on down. Take a swig from your Mobile Cup of Joe. Alrighty, so here we go with my full review for the Verizon Ellipsis 7. A real big thank you and quick thank you to our friends. Cut. 45 will go. Alright, before we get too far in this video review, I'd like to give a big thank you to my friends over at Verizon for sending me the Verizon Ellipsis 7 to review for you guys today. A big thumbs up and thank you to them. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this review. And we're going to start out with the design. And right off the bat, you can see that the Verizon Ellipsis 7 Android tablet is not the prettiest of them out there. Uh, going from the front first, we have this Verizon logo at the bottom. And at the top, we do have our front-facing uh, 0 0.3 megapixel VGA camera. And then we do have two front-facing speakers right here. Now, you will see that the bezels on the display are quite large, both at the bottom and the top and on the sides as well. Uh, the bottom and top bezels do help if you're playing a game, like Riptide GP for example, you can hold it and have both thumbs rest here, uh, but the bezels just do feel uh, rather large on both the sides in the top and bottom. They could have shrunk them down a bit more, um, so that is one gripe I have with the design. While we're talking about the front of the design though, I would like to mention or make a note to those front-facing speakers. Uh, you do have front-facing speakers here on the Ellipsis 7, and I'll play a, a quick sample of the audio for you guys real quick so you can kind of get an idea for how it sounds. We'll go ahead and hop in here real quick. Just an audio test. If it wants to load up. And see so when it's saying, you can see it's taking it a bit of time. Um, as we'll get into more with the rest of the review, a lot of the Ellipsis 7 just feels uh, very, very slow, as you can see with it trying to buffer the song right here. And it is. <laughs> so you can hear that it does get relatively loud. Uh, but don't let these front-facing speakers fool you. This is not like the same quality you're going to see on the HTC One with boom sound. It is nice to have the audio facing you, but I will say also, it's very easy to cover these speakers. If you're holding it, say, playing a racing game or something, it's quite easy to cover those speakers with your hand when playing. Uh, so it is a nice addition, but they aren't the best quality out there. If we go into the right-hand side, we'll find our power slash lock button, our volume rocker, and we have this little hatch here to reveal our SIM slot and our micro SD card slot. 8 gigabytes of internal storage, but you can expand it with micro SD card. Going up top, we have our 3.5 millimeter headset jack. On the bottom, we have our micro USB syncing slash charging port. Uh, nothing on the left side. Going on to the back, we do have our 3.2 megapixel camera, a Verizon logo, 4G LT logo. And you will might be able to see there's this kind of this a faux uh, stainless steel finish on the back, kind of a faux metal. Uh, it is plastic, in fact, don't let it fool you, this is plastic. Uh, if you hit it in the light, you kind of see these hairline um, etches in there to make it look like metal, but this is still very much plastic. And it really just is a very ugly tablet. It's very hard to hold and grip in one hand, a lot unlike the Nexus 7, which is very easy to grip in one hand. You really have to stretch your fingers and your, to get your whole hand around this with one hand. Uh, and really just kind of ugly too. You got those big bezels on the front and the sides and the top and bottom. Uh, Verizon logo on the front, logos on the back. And then this cheap looking plastic with that very, very ugly 
camera lens right there. All in all, just not a very pretty looking tablet. Again, I know Verizon doesn't try to make this a very high-end tablet, but it just really doesn't look that nice. Now, if you're in the market for a budget tablet, you don't have a lot of money. I know that looks may not be the first thing that you're going to uh, go to when you're looking for a tablet, but it still would have been nice to see a little bit better looking machine from Verizon. Now, let's go ahead and get into some hardware. Uh, in terms of processing speeds, the Verizon Ellipsis 7 is packing in a 1.2 gigahertz quad-core processor along with one gigabyte of RAM. Uh, you can see swiping through home screens and stuff is relatively smooth. I was actually surprised by that. Hopping into your applications, a little bit of delay when opening your application drawer. Let's go ahead and open up Riptide GP2 here just so you can see how gameplay performance does roll. On my time with the device, I had noticed that web browsing on something like Google Chrome went fine. But if you're getting into things like multitasking or heavy games like Riptide GP2, uh, the tablet does show its weaknesses. So let's go ahead and just go to a race right here in Riptide GP2. And it does take it a bit of time to load, tap to continue. And let's get started with this race. So a lot of the animations that um, right off the bat are a bit glitchy. It is playable. I'm not saying that gameplay on the Ellipsis 7 is not doable. You can play games like Riptide GP2, but you're just not going to get the best experience on here. I am running into walls and everything. I'm just trying to look at the game through the camera lens. But again, you can play games on here. You can play Plants vs. Zombies. You can play uh, Stupid Zombies. You can play Angry Birds. You can play Riptide GP2. Just keep in mind that when you do get into these heavy or more graphically intense games or more intense games on the GPU, you are going to get some drops in the frame rate. Uh, it's not going to be as smooth as something like the Nexus 7, for example. So gaming is doable on here. You just don't expect a very high-end experience. And as we open up a lot of applications, so we open up the Google, and we go home, and we hop into Chrome, go home, and then we hop into another app, such as um, Flipboard, we go home, and then we go to multitask, go back to Google search. It's there, go back to Reptide GP2. It has to resume the game, takes a bit of time. We hop back, go to Flipboard. Takes a bit of time to get there. So as you load this thing up with stuff, it will start to slow down and get a bit laggy. Um, that's just because it doesn't have the best processor in here. Again, I know it's a budget tablet, but there is not all the processing power you may need if you're a power, power user. Just keep in mind, this is not the best in terms of processing speeds out there. Now, I'd also like to touch on that display. This is a 7-inch display, what it, uh, Verizon is calling it an HD display, and it is technically high definition, but it's only a 1280 by 800 HD display with around 216 pixels per inch, and it's really quite poor to look at. Um, you know, from a distance, it looks relatively okay, but as you get close, not sure how well it's going to be represented on this video. Uh, colors are decent, but viewing angles are pretty poor, actually all things considered. It gets uh, blurred out and washed out quite quickly uh, from a lot of viewing angles. Um, text is quite fuzzy at times. Icons look really fuzzy. Really the color is not all like I'd like to have it, especially after having used uh, 1080p devices like the Google Nexus 7 with that 1920 by 1080p Full HD display. This display really pales in comparison to that. Uh, it looks decent. It gets the job done. It's not the worst display out there in the market for a 7-inch tablet, but it is far far from the best as well. Again, so far what we've seen so far with this tablet, it does some stuff okay, but there is room for improvement. I'd like to touch on those cameras real quick again. You have a 3.2 megapixel camera on the back with a 0.3 megapixel camera on the front, and really I was quite disappointed with both cameras. I really don't come to expect much from cameras and tablets at all, but just when I opened up the camera for, for, for the first time and saw this user interface, I knew it was going to be bad. I mean, this looks like a user interface of a camera app from the 2.3 gingerbread days of Android. You have certain things such as auto face and face beauty. You have normal mode uh, panorama shots. You have auto sync select. You have got auto capture when a smile is detected. But just the user interface looks very poor. You can snap a picture with that button right there. You can start to record a video here. You can swap to your front-facing camera this way, but it is VGA quality recording audio, or video rather, and it just looks very, very poor. It's very grainy. Both the cameras really disappoint quite a lot. Again, I don't come to expect much from uh, tablet cameras, but these really do leave a lot to be desired. 
Now in regards to battery life on the Ellipsis 7, I was able to get through a full day of use each time. Uh, roughly about six to eight hours of video playback on here. That's with uh, watching YouTube videos, gaming, web browsing. So fairly solid battery life actually. Uh, if you just know when to carry around the house or play some games, um, you shouldn't have an issue with battery life. Again, I was able to get through a full day all the time, so that really wasn't an issue for me at all. Now one interesting thing I like to talk about is the data connection. So the Verizon Ellipsis 7 does have access to Verizon's 4G LTE network, as you can see by the indicator up in the notification bar of the screen. But they took out, or Verizon took out the 2G and 3G modems and bands from the tablet. So you can see that right now I actually lost the 4G indicator because while you do have access to the 4G LTE networks on Verizon, you do not have access to fall back on the 2G or 3G net connections. So I live in Lawrence, Michigan, which is a relatively good location for Verizon Wireless. Uh, 4G LTE, a lot of the times that sometimes it will fall back in those moments to 3G. Well, on the Ellipsis 7, you see that we hop back to the 4G LTE right there. But because, and we dropped out again, perfect example. So when you drop out of that 4G LTE connection with Verizon, you go into a zone where their LTE is not supported, you cannot have access to mobile data on here at all. You can still use the Wi-Fi, but the mobile data will not work whatsoever if you're not in a location with 4G LTE. You can only access LTE. You cannot fall back to 2G or any 3G or any other speed. And that's a bit of a disappointment and really irks me with this tablet. It wasn't something that Verizon really talks about with that I had to look online to research and find it and just using it in day-to-day -day use. But it is a big issue for me because a lot of the times you might have to fall back on 3G. I have to fall back on 3G data quite a bit with Verizon service in my area. So that was a big disappointment with me for the Ellipsis 7. And now let's hop into some software for this device. Uh, out of the box and without any words of a future software update, the Verizon Ellipsis 7 tablet is running Android version 4.2.2 Jelly Bean, which is quite outdated at this point. We've had 4.3 Jelly Bean, we've had 4.4 Kit Kat, the latest version of Android now is 4.4.3 KitKat. This thing is still many versions behind on 4.2.2 Jellybean. And it still runs relatively smoothly, but because 4.4 KitKat is such a low power consuming version of the Android operating system is so light, it would do wonders to this tablet right here, especially with multitasking and whatnot. But you still have an older version of Jellybean. Uh, you do have things like Google Now on here still. You still have lock screen widgets, all the things that were introduced with 4.2.2 Jelly Bean. You still have your quick settings right here, as you can see with your notifications on one side and your quick settings on the other, but it is an old version of Android. There's no way around it. You still have the Play Store. You still have Google Play Music. You still have all of your Google Apps, Google Plus, Google Hangouts, and whatnot, Google Settings, but this is a very old version of the Android OS. And whether or not it's going to be updated, 4.4 KitKat is still left to be heard of, so uh, yeah, you have a very old version of Android on here. It's not the oldest by far, but still 4.2.2 Jelly Bean in this day and age in March, no, in April of 2014, got to get my months right, is very disappointing. So at the end of the day, with all that said, I would have to say you might want to pass here on the Verizon Ellipsis 7, especially when you consider the price point. Uh, if you want to get this with Verizon service, but without a two, new two-year contract, which I'd assume how you'd want to get it, you will have to shell out $249, which is a bit ridiculous considering that the Google Nexus 7 that came out last year in 2013 sells or starts selling for just $229, a full $20 less than the Verizon Ellipsis 7. I've actually um, got a comparison video of this and the Nexus 7. It will be a link in the description below once it's uploaded. Not sure if this video is going to go up first or the comparison. But I have done a comparison video between this and the Nexus 7. The Nexus 7 just brings far more better specifications for a lower price point. And that's really what makes it hard to recommend this tablet. Even just not the Nexus 7, there's the HP Slate 7, you've got the Kindle Fire HDX, uh, you have the Google or the Barnes & Noble Nook tablet, which is a bit old, but with the Google Play support, it has a better display, better processor. And it's really hard to recommend this tablet when you consider all the competition out there for the same or even a cheaper price point. It does have 4G LTE data connectivity. It's one of the cheapest tablets you can get on Verizon with 4G LTE, but it has a very lacking design, lacking processing speeds, a lacking display, old version of Bluetooth, old version of Wi-Fi, 
only access 2.4 gigahertz band Bluetooth 3.0, which doesn't support the new smartwatches or health bands. And really, there's a lot of room for improvement. You have the available to expand the memory via micro SD card slot, which is always nice. But old version of Android, there's just too many cons for this to really have me recommend it. If you need a bare bones device to hop online and you're in a family, you need a new tablet on your plane with Verizon, you could do worse, but you could do much, much better. And for that reason, I would have to say, try to stay away from this tablet. If you absolutely need a tablet right now on Verizon, this is not a horrible way to go, but just make sure you do your research before plopping down your hard earned cash. And with that said, that's all the time I have for this episode of Mobile Cup of Joe. Guys, if you'd like to know more about the Verizon Ellipsis 7, or if you have it, or just like to share your thoughts on it, please let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out my comparison video between this and the Google and Asus Nexus 7 tablet. Make sure you follow Mobile Cup of Joe on Twitter, at Mobile Cup of Joe, and follow me personally on Twitter as well, where I am at JoeMarin1. Be sure to subscribe to ensure you never miss the latest episode of MCOJ. And if you like the video, I'd really would appreciate it if you'd go ahead and hit that like button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.